Welcome to the DJE Podcast, where you will learn about real estate investing from real life examples. Here's your host, Devin Elder. Welcome to the latest episode. Very glad to have with us today, Mr. Dax Ferguson. He's the founder of Heritage Construction and Consulting Services, a multifamily construction firm based out of the DFW Dallas-Fort Worth area. Uh, without any further ado, Dax, welcome. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Great to be yeah. here. Yeah, glad to have you on. So uh, we're going to dive into kind of all things multifamily construction and renovation here. And I, I, I'm really glad to have you on because we talk to a lot of sponsors, operators, you know, folks raising capital for, for deals and kind of focusing on that side. But I'm excited to have you on to talk about some of the nuts and bolts of, of getting through a value add turnaround. How did you get into the multifamily construction space? How, you know, what's your background and what led you there? It's kind of by accident. Uh, went to school for uh, theater of all things, which is kind oh, of wow. crazy. And then um, my dream job out of college was to work for a consulting firm that built uh, performing arts theaters. And, and I did that for a company here in Dallas for a while. And then after that, uh, went and started entrepreneurship. So opened up a home theater company, uh, built home theaters, um, uh, even Worked on some in Hollywood for some very uh, well-known people. And then um, back in 2008, I really, I, I, was, I was married to my job and working too much. And um, I, I have a large family. I have nine boys. Uh, All right. And, um, you know, I needed to spend some more time with them. And I uh, was looking to really get back to my roots of construction and building things uh, that I'd, I'd really wanted to do. So 2008, made the switch, went to work for a roofing company here in Dallas, uh, traveled to San Antonio. Dad passed away in 2010, and uh, it was at that moment I went, I need to do something for myself. Uh, Dad was always an entrepreneur himself, owned, owned several businesses through my life, and um, Heritage was born. So that was 2011. We started in single family and did uh, a little bit of multifamily mm -hmm. and um, met some great people in this industry and really fell in love with it. And so started switching my business over um, little by little. In 2015, we made the switch and went to full t uh, multifamily full time. Yeah, that's great. They, they are two different animals. I mean, there's some similarities between single family and multifamily, but Different groups of folks, different players, different approach, um, for, for sure. You and I had an interesting conversation the other day, actually on one of our projects, how, and, and we were talking about how you are working on projects throughout Texas and different things, but how you guys really don't focus too much on those interior renovations. You guys like to go tackle the big exterior CapEx items. Is that right? You're right. So what we really focus on is exterior. We do, you know, roofing, siding, painting, uh, pergolas, outdoor kitchens, um, uh, parking lots, you know, patios, pool decks. We do, we do everything on the exterior and we do it well. And one of our big um, pushes that we, we like to focus on is we like to come in, deploy large groups of crews and we knock it out. We're in and out as fast as possible and we're moving on to the next job. We find that we're held up by decisions being made from the ownership group of uh, what color do we want to pick on this job? And, sure. and we're like, okay, well, you have three weeks to pick it. They're like, that's plenty of time. And then you get to that. <laughs> well, they still haven't made their decision yet. So uh, we like to keep our guys moving, but um, we have some great partnerships with, uh, with these uh, lead investors and it's been, it's been great for us um, or the sponsors. Uh, it's been great for us to have partnerships because we find that these guys want to partner with us, with our ideas and what we bring to the table is not just, you know, uh, a paintbrush and a hammer and nail. We, we have a lot of ideas and things that we see because we do operate all over Texas and in Georgia. So we're, we're tackling some, some big projects all over and it's, it's a good partnership in both, both ways. 
Yeah, that makes sense. And I love to leverage uh, our, our partner's experience. You know, we, instead of going into a project and saying, hey, I know I'm going to do this. I know I'm going to configure the gym this way. I know that I'm going to paint this accent wall this. It's like, hey, you've done um, 10 times as many as, as I have. I've done a bunch, but somebody else has done 10 times. What do you say? What have you seen? What, what are residents responding to well in, in other markets? And so there's this whole like level of expertise that you can just tap into. And um, I, I always welcome that kind of feedback for sure. So you guys have done it enough now over the years. You've seen kind of what works and what doesn't. What are some things that sponsors have you've seen sponsors do? And by sponsor, I mean, you know, the person running the deal on a large multifamily project that uh, they've kind of shot their self in the foot on a, on a kind of a rehab perspective. Anything that comes to mind like uh, cautionary tales when it comes to multifamily rehab? You know, I see most of those um, happen on the interiors where they over rehab. Uh, right. We weren't necessarily a part of it, but we do talk to them about interiors. We know a lot about the industry, so they, they do consult and ask us. But I've seen some people go into some pretty rough areas and, and over rehab them where it's, you know, they're putting granite countertops, stainless steel appliances, and they really make it look great. But you're Guilty. never really going to get the push that you're, you you get in some other areas. And so it's really an over rehab for, for that market. And I would say that's probably what I see a lot of. Other thing on the exterior, um, a lot of these sponsors come in and they have ideas. Well, these roofs are old. I need to replace them because uh, that's what I want to do. And, and so I talked them through this a lot and especially on roofs um i'll tell you roofing we make a lot of money on roofing and i like to make money there's no no way around that but if i can save you money on roofs and not spend that money there and we can spend it on some amenities that add to the property that creates a stickiness so that you can raise the rents a little more that keep the people there longer you have less turns things like that that's a much better value for you uh, than replacing the roofs. And so we, we do a lot of roof assessments to where they say, Hey, I've got a pitched roof. They're 12 years old and they look bad to me. And I'm like, okay, well, let me get up there and look and give you an honest assessment of this roof. And I go, you know what? You have a few penetrations that are cracking. Let's fix those by plumbing boots and things of that nature. Let's fix those. Let's, let's reseal those, paint them so that they look a little bit better from the ground. And ultimately your roof is okay. Now, if it has hail damage, that's one story, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about in markets to where hail isn't as prominent and um, you don't really need to replace the roof. Yeah, that's a huge uh, capital expense line item replacing that roof. And you might even get the hail claim in a year or two. I mean, every property I look at in San Antonio, new roof, right? There you go. <laughs> that's, a that's huge. I still battle with that. And I see people fight with that. Sponsors fight with that all the time. Well, you know, this is what my house looks like. And it's like, no, 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 this is a completely different project here. You have to separate the two. This is not an emotion based decision. This is, this is all, all net operating and income driven. And if you're raising money, syndicating a deal, it's a hundred percent investor return driven. So you got to take that emotional piece out of it. And then, uh, but it's a struggle, you know, you want to just go in and, and fix everything. And there's a, there's a line you have to draw with those budgets and um, having a third party that's kind of over it. I mean, you've got no emotional investment. You go out and see 150 unit property. You're like, all right, this is the thousandth uh, 150 unit property I've seen. It's like, we know exactly what to do because we've done it a hundred times and you don't get worked up emotionally. Um, what are some of the exterior things in the last couple of years that you guys have seen um, be popular with residents? You know, we talk about pergolas. If the property's got a pool, maybe there's something to do there. Is Are there other things, you know, hammocks or, you know, accent walls? And I'm just spitballing here, but anything you see be kind of a recurring theme on exterior uh, improvements or amenities that, that seem to work well? So one of the things I really take pride in is creating the stickiness factor, creating community areas. So pergolas are, are, are a great community area around a uh, playground or something of that nature or an outdoor kitchen. Um, reason for it is uh, we're, 
we collectively are raising rents at these properties and taking away some of these people's expendable income for eating out and doing some of the other things that they want to do, but they still want to provide something for their kids. So what, what, by creating these areas, what you've done is you have Sally and uh, Susie that live next door to each other. And Sally's a busy single mom and Susie may, may be married and have a couple of kids and they're, you know, out cooking outside and they bring on the grill, they bring Susie over, you know, Sally brings Susie over and they grill together and their families mesh together and the rents have raised, but they can't afford, you know, going out to eat. So they join their community and they eat together, which saves them money. But what it also does at the same time, they don't want to leave that atmosphere that's been created for them. So they're willing to pay a hundred extra dollars for that apartment that, you know, has turned over time and it really feels nice. And it really has become home to them because they have this new community that they're, they're, uh, you know, outside with and gathering with and doing community things with. So we have found that to be one of the biggest advantages of adding some of these spaces um, to that. Playgrounds are huge. If you have vandalism uh, by the little kids on the property, we've seen properties where we've put playgrounds in and the kids actually aren't throwing rocks at the windows anymore. They're actually playing on the playground and enjoying it. And so it gives them something else to do to distract them. Yeah, that's such a great point. And that's that's our goal here as operators is to create, look, we spend a lot of time in spreadsheets and looking at investor returns, but at the end of the day, somebody needs to drive home and be glad that they live there. And so it's, it's the basic stuff like making sure um, work orders are taken care of, that the staff's friendly, but th- th- that it just feels like home. I love that, that um, point, Dax, about creating that sense of community because that will be the the most powerful glue um, in a community. And and you might be able to do it relatively easily with a little bit of forethought. What, um, what about, you know, we're kind of talking about big exterior stuff. What do you guys see work in say a leasing office? You know, a lot of times these are seventies or eight 1980s assets that, you know, if I could go out and buy uh, 2015 assets, man, I would sure love to own. That'd be really cool. And uh, be great, but you know my investors um, they don't want two percent returns, right? So we've got to go find stuff where there's some kind of improvement to be made. And a lot of times it's '70s or '80s asset, and it's it's maybe a little tired. What have you seen work on the on the leasing office side with maybe a remodel or reconfiguration of these older assets? A couple of things that I see um, with, with the offices. A lot of times the offices are in units, right? You probably see that all the time, sure. and they really fade into the property. Nothing stands out about them. They're just a unit that has a sign that says office. One of the things that we've done a lot is in that space in front of that office along the street is we may paint that section of the building a little different color to make it pop out and say, hey, there's something different about this space. Um, And then maybe add a little pergola awning in front of it, not a fabric awning because those are so dated, but maybe a little pergola awning that says, hey, come here, we're invited. But once you get to the interior, not having it look like it's a 70s apartment, making it look different, making it stand out, um, you know, through colors, you know, do your interiors flooring the same way, do the same paint scheme, but maybe have a glass wall for your manager to be on the other side of. So your manager can see them. They can see somebody in there if your manager's in there alone at that time or whatever, but having something that really gives class to the unit, not just putting your logo on the wall and, and saying, Hey, this, this looks great. Another amenity that I find more than the, the office space that people create a lot of times or the business center space, but really just having a printer, that you can get on Wi-Fi and be able to use for your tenants. That is probably one of the bigger amenities that I've seen used. It doesn't go unused because people go, Oh my goodness, I've got a job application. I need to print it. My printer's out of ink. I can't afford to go get ink. And you know what? Our office has a printer that you can use, come in and use it anytime. Whether you put restrictions on it, that's your call. Um, You know, how many pages and all that but I think it brings your tenants into your office space so you can have more conversation with them and know what's going on in their life. 
Yeah, that's such a great point. And printers are fantastic amenity. Um, love it. That's great feedback on the office. Are there, um, let's talk about kind of the life cycle. So a lot of times a sponsor is going to go in, they're going to try and identify an asset that is maybe a couple of decades old, it's kind of tired. Um, there's a lot of work that goes into upfront kind of getting this to the closing table and then finally they close the property. What does it typically look like for you when you're when you're working with somebody, you buy, let's say, a 100-plus unit apartment complex in, in a Texas market. What happens after that closing day, and how do you, uh, how do you like to kind of move forward with the, with the turnaround process from there? So I like to be involved before closing process, obviously. So we have kind of our game plan in place so that when we close, we can deploy immediately. You know, it, we, we always do within two weeks from a signed contract, we, we deploy on a job. But I'm talking, hey, you close on Thursday. Next, you know, I know that two weeks, you know, ago. Now we want to start the following Monday because if a closing gets pushed a day or two, it's not the end of the world, right? Sure. So um, we like to jump on it pretty quick and deploy the biggest splash, right? So we're going to be the biggest splash as well. We need to paint this place. We need to add we need to add some paint and some color to it and show that you're doing something. Um, we need to add, you know, a, a pergola in an outdoor kitchen. We can have that up in two days. And so you have some of that splash for the community. They're like, Oh wow, they're doing great here. But I'll tell you one of the biggest things that I've seen owners or sponsors do is they'll do vision boards in their office and they'll say, Hey, this is what we're doing to this place. We want to have you around for it. And when cool. they start showing the community what they're doing, the community starts getting excited. And when the community gets excited, they start telling their friends. And then their friends come over and go, I want to be a part of this before the rents bump. And they'll start joining. And so now you may have bought a property that's at 80% occupied, but even through the construction, you're losing some people, but you're gaining some people because they want to be a part of what's going on. And it makes, it creates this buzz within the community and in the city. So it's, it's pretty exciting to watch that. Yeah, that's really great. And it's, it's all back to that kind of community um, approach, getting people's buy-in, what, what does a vision board look like? Is this something where you've got maybe some different color swatches or textures or a, you know, a rendering or what is that? What do you see that look like? So we use PPG uh, almost primarily for all of our properties and PPG does a rendering of your property. So I can take a picture of your property and I can have PPG do a rendering of that and show you what the new colors are going to like. And you can take those pictures and that can be a part of your vision board. Your vision board looks very much like what's behind your head on, on your wall there. It's mm -hmm. showing them pictures of, Hey, we're adding this, you know, adding the pergola in the kitchen that's, that's behind you and showing a vision board. We're adding this to our property because most people don't know what a pergola in an outdoor kitchen really look like or what your thoughts are. So just giving them, it doesn't have to be on that property. It just has to be, Hey, we're adding this to our property and getting your staff to buy in and show them, Hey, this is what we're doing. I just want to show you what we're doing to this property because they get excited too. Yeah, that's great. And it maybe um, takes a little while to implement that stuff. Although if you plan it out, you're talking days. But if you can show it to people, staff and residents right away and say, hey, we're not just um, coming in to take over and change nothing. We got plans. We're going to spend some money, make this place uh, nicer. I think you, get, you can get some additional mileage even before you, you start putting stuff in. I love it. As long as it's up before the first of the month, they'll come see it when they pay that rent, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, I want to touch on with you, Dax, one of my, um, you know, challenges, I guess you call it, but, you know, the, the bank draw process. So we go buy these things and we say, hey, we're going to put a million bucks into this property. The bank goes, okay, well, give us a million dollars and um, we'll hold it for you you know, yep. and uh, we'll, we'll give you back your own money as the work's done. So you gotta, you gotta kind of go through the draw process, which, yeah. you know, depending on the lender, um, I've had, had that be very difficult. I've had it be, you know, fairly simple, but how do you guys come in with a draw process? Say, let's say sponsors got a million dollar renovation budget and half that's for the exterior, maybe half is unit turns and interior stuff. So that's a, that's a whole other thing. But on the exterior, um, what does that look like typically for you guys? 
So uh, I'll toot my horn a little bit on this, but it, <laughs> really you have to have a strong contractor um, that, ca that can help cash flow your properties. I'm not saying draw them out forever, but the process really is 30 to 60 days from when you complete that work is when you're going to get the money. And if you don't have a contractor that can help cash flow, it's going to put you as a sponsor in, in a tight spot because you don't necessarily have the cash to float your contractor through this whole process and it will delay your job getting done, which will delay you being able to increase rents, which will delay your whole performa that you have put in place. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I, I, I just want to underscore that. And if we send this podcast to editing, let's make a clip out of that because you can get a, you can get a contractor that's dirt cheap and they, they they need the check on Friday, right? Well, who's writing that check? The sponsor's writing the check. We've got a property where I've got to write the, I've got to write the property hundred K check out of pocket because we need to get this stuff done. And the vendor that's in there, um, these guys can't, can't, they don't have any operating capital, you know? And so that's such a huge takeaway and such a huge distinction, especially on these large projects where you've got multiple hundred thousand dollar, you got a million dollar budget. Um, it's, it's, I just can't underscore that enough that you've got to be able to work with a GC that is not, um, you know, showing up at your office Friday <laughs> when the work was done Friday morning and saying, Hey, boss, I need the check, you know? And it's like, wow, well, look, we've got a bank to deal with and we've got a process and we need to deal with a, an actual real company here that understands having uh, sent an invoice and, and, you know, give us a little time to go through the process. So that's huge. And for any, you know, aspiring sponsors listening, that can be a, a painful process going through a uh, apartment turnaround. You know, I speak from experience here where if you're working with a partner on the GC side that can, uh, understands that process and is not uh, going to go out of business if they don't get your check in, in three days. That's a huge advantage and that's just part, all part of building your team. So great point. Just wanted to kind of underscore that. Yeah. Partnership is huge in, in that category for sure. Um, but moving, moving on past that, you know, we, we do standard draws. We have a standard draw system that we have in place, but it's, it's a guideline, right? So sure. I understand I'm going to finish, you know, I'm going to ask for a deposit and at 50% completion of my scope of work, I'm going to invoice for another uh, draw. And then when I'm a hundred percent complete, I'm going to go for my last draw. And that's, and that's the process. But I know that those things take time and um, it, I will be more lenient on customers that I'm in partnership with and I've done work for, you know, before in the past. But uh, starting out, you know, you have a little bit of leeway and you just have a working knowledge and communication is key. Making sure that they, you both understand when the money's coming in, where it's at, and everybody's doing their job to get it there. Yeah, love it. No, that makes perfect sense. Um, let's touch a little bit. You and I spoke, we were talking about actually one of our projects a few weeks ago, and we, we talked a little bit about a due diligence uh, product that you guys are rolling out or maybe have already rolled out to help sponsors on the front end. Um, is that available for consumption publicly yet or wh where is that? Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. So we launched uh, this new platform in January of this year and um, I'm super excited about it. Um, it's, it makes me like a little kid again to talk about it. So thanks Love for bringing it, it up. <laughs> so, um, we offer a product where we walk into every unit of the property. So I'm just going to give it based on a hundred unit property sure. and it's a $500 setup and it's $30 per unit that we per unit on the property. So you can extrapolate the math on that. We take 25 to 35 pictures per interior. And what we include in that is your appliances. So we take a picture of the front or outside of your refrigerator, but we also take a picture of the serial number of that refrigerator. Same for microwave and ovens, um, all the stuff uh, that you need the information on. So you don't have to go back to that unit if something goes out, you can see if it's a warranty item or you can see if you need parts, but you already have the serial number to order parts. I think it's key to not go in these places so many times. Now you're going to have to touch it and see what's wrong with it. I understand that. But sure. You don't need to go back and order the part from that. You have all the data there. You have the manufacturer and the serial number. The other things are a lot of times you'll walk into uh, a, 
a property and they'll say, well, we've upgraded 70% of the units and 30% have not been upgraded. So we left some meat on the bone for you, right? Yes. Classic well, story. Reality is 70% of the units that they may have already redone to some level or another, there may be a couple of what we call hoarder houses in there, right? To where they have just completely trashed out a brand new renovated unit and you really have to totally redo that unit again and your budget didn't allow for that because 70% were complete. Yep. So you have a picture of the hoarder house. You have a picture of the person that has lived there for 30 plus years and you walk into a time warp when you walk into their unit. They may be the sweetest ladies on earth, but you know, history tells me that they don't call in a work order when their hot water stops working. They'll just live with it. And yeah. you may not know that that's, you know, that's an issue because they'll never call the work order in. They just live with things. So we really develop a relationship with these people when we're walking these units and talk to them and really get to the nitty gritty of, Hey, how's this? How's that going? And then we're able to give you a report and it's instantaneous, right? So you can log on this. You're not at the property as a sponsor, but you're, you're on your computer and you can see us doing this in real time and know where we're at, how many units we've walked, um, what shape units are in. And we categorize everything in good, functional, or needs replacement. It's pretty standard format, but how we categorize that is we walk the unit with, uh, with the sponsors for the first couple of units and we go, hey, this is how we categorize. Do you agree with that? And if they say yes or I, I think that's still functional, I don't think you need to replace that. Great. Now we know moving forward for the rest of the property, we're seeing the way that you want us to see it. And then you look in, you have your report. And it's, uh, it's available with, uh, with your login and you can see what the cost of what it's going to take per unit or how many dishwashers you need to replace and how many refrigerators you need to replace. So you have those numbers in real time while we're there. Yeah, it's so critical to dial in your capital improvement or your rehab budget up front and make sure you have all those out, those dollars allocated before you close. And it's a balancing act for the sponsors out there where, you don't, you can't raise too much money because then you've got to, you know, distribute returns based on that money and it's going to dilute your returns, but you certainly don't want to be short and um, be scrambling for cash or, or any kind of terrible scenario like that. So having that stuff dialed in is, is great. And you, you guys can get in and, and do inspections on a property. I mean, really, really soon after getting that property under contract and it'll give everybody a, a really good view. And then maybe there's an opportunity to go back to the seller and not that I'm a big advocate of retrading deals, but if something was completely misrepresented, uh, you can use that detailed report to say, well, look, well, it looks like we have kind of some down units here that weren't accounted for. And we've got to account for that in our budget. And it just gives you a clear sense of reality. Everybody's going to be happier going in investors, happier owners, happier, et cetera, um, to have that all up front. What does somebody need to do to engage you on something like that? And when, I guess another question, Dax, when do you want a sponsor to engage you? You know, if, if you're, if they're out there looking at all these properties and running numbers, that's fine. But what's kind of the trigger point to say, Hey, let's call Dax and, and, and get, get some, get some eyes on this property. When do you like to see that happen? So, so that's twofold. That will be um, yep. for the due diligence part. Um, when you're going, Hey, this is real. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go into contract on, on this. And um, so we can make sure you're in the schedule and we don't have to worry about, you know, Oh, well, I'm, I've got four other due diligence going on right now. I won't be able to get to you for two weeks. That, that kills your deal. We can always add people to our team and make it happen if we know ahead in, in advance on these. So engage us when you think you're going into contract on that. On the construction side, I walk properties all the time with sponsors who go, hey, I have a really neat property. I really think I want it. Will you come shoot holes in this for me? And I walk it. You know, am I going to fly to New York to do that? No, but hey, I've got a property I'm looking at. It's in San Antonio. When are you going to be in San Antonio again? I'll be there in three weeks. Great. Put me on your schedule when you're here because I want to walk a property with you. Now, if it's a little bit closer to that and you're like, no, I'm serious about this one, 
give me a call. We'll come out. I'll get somebody there or myself and we'll look at it and we'll uh, make sure it's the right buy for you before you go into contract because man, that's uh that can get scary if you get into contract and you see some things you had no clue about yep. that I can help you. Yep. That's right. That's right. And, and, um, and there's cases where somebody's going to use leverage your expertise, steer clear of trouble, the old ax- axiom, uh, no deal is better than a bad deal. Definitely rings true here. And so uh, I think a lot of folks can stay out of trouble on, on projects just by having a, a seasoned eye, take a look at things. Um, well, let, this is great information. I've actually taken a lot of notes here, Dax, and I appreciate your, your time. Is there anything kind of a, a takeaway you would leave for a sponsor or an aspiring sponsor that, you know, if you could, if you could just impart one thing, you know, to a sponsor to help them be more successful, is there something having seen all these deals worked with all these sponsors that you would like to leave people with? Ask a ton of questions because mm-hmm. questions can save your tail in more instances than not asking that question because I've seen people assume something um, and, and over raised money for a project they didn't need to raise money for because it's something they really didn't need to do. I've seen people walk away from deals because they assumed something that was not true. And I'll give you a a real quick instance on this, Uh, working on a property in San Antonio and they had some uh, lines running the exterior of the property. Uh, It was just uh, gray water lines from their sinks the PV, not the PVC, but the cast iron had busted and they couldn't get it unclogged. So they ran it on the outside of the building and then they had run it into a clean out and they go, we're walking away from this deal because we got bids for $300,000 to fix this. And I'm like, wait a minute. I know some people at the city. Let me go talk to them and let me talk to my plumber and make sure. And lo and behold, there was only one thing out of code that was a less than $2,000 fix And it made the deal live again. And so I I helped them save a deal by just them asking the questions. And they weren't going to ask me the question on this property. I was meeting them about another one. But it just so happened I said, hey, I'll be in San Antonio. They're like, oh, I didn't know you were down there. And they're like, yeah. And so they brought the picture, showed them to me. And literally within, they were going to sign it that day that they were going to walk away from the deal. And I said, give me 24 hours. And I got them the answers they needed and it saved the deal. And wow. uh, we're doing work on that property now. So asking questions is huge. Yeah, that's, that's phenomenal. And that's, um, you, you have to, it's a, it's such a game. You gotta, you gotta dial this stuff in up front. There's a lot of money on the line, raising a lot of money, <clears throat> a lot at stake there, but um, great, great point to, to have some experienced eyes on some of those larger CapEx items there to, to keep a deal in play. It's hard to find deals right now. So you come in and save them uh $298,000 on paper and the deal's back in play. And that's awesome. Yeah. That's a win. That's yeah. a win. It's a, it's a win-win. Love it. Um, so if people want to reach out and find out more about you, we've got your, your website, heritageccs.com. Um, any other kind of good spots for folks to, to learn more or connect with you? Find me on Facebook, um, Dax Ferguson. Um, you know, it's a, it's a great way to keep in contact with me. Um, uh, on Facebook all the time and communicating with people and looking at uh, apartment deals. So I find out about them and I'll, I'll reach out to you as well. But um, Facebook is a good way. I'll do some podcasts and some other things on there so you can hear what's lo- new and exciting there. Um, a- another way to contact me and get into my uh, mailing system is uh, if you'll text inspect to four 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 nine 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 you'll get on our mailing list and we'll, we'll send you out our monthly newsletter and just kind of show you what's happening just to give you some other ideas. Excellent. Excellent. Well, lots of ways to reach out then to you and your company. I recommend those sponsors uh, that are looking at those bigger deals do that. And Dax, thank you so much. Appreciate you sharing with us today. Thank you so much. Have a great day. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. You too. Thank you for listening to the DJE Podcast. For more information, please go to DJETexas.com.